are you about ready to give up on Greek? In this video, we're going to look at six reasons why people give up on Greek and what you can do about it. Hi, I'm Daryl Burling from Master New Testament Greek, here to help you gain the clarity, confidence, efficiency, and vitality that comes from being able to read the New Testament in the original Greek language. If that sounds like you, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, and then hit the notify bell to be notified when new videos come out. So here's the thing, I often get emails from people who are either about to give up on Greek or have given up on Greek. And there's a number of reasons that are given, but really there are six core reasons that people give up on Greek. In this video, we're gonna take a look at those six reasons and what you can do about them in each case. The first one of these is time. Time is a commodity that we all get the same amount of. We can't get more of it, we can't, we can't get rid of the time that we have, but what we do get to do is choose how we spend that time. And when we say we don't have enough time, really we're saying that I'm choosing not to spend time on Greek right now, and why would we do that? Well, here's the reason. Ultimately, we don't think it's important enough. We are spending the time on the things we think are important, and by saying I don't have enough time for Greek, we're saying I don't believe that learning Greek has enough value for me to prioritize it in my daily schedule. That's the challenge of it. So it's not so much that we don't have time because you and I have the same amount of time. The issue is here that it's our priorities. Greek is simply not a priority right now. Now, it may be that Greek isn't a big priority for you, and that's fine. This is It's not for everybody, and I'm not trying to convince everybody that you know everybody needs to learn Greek. We have good English translations of the New Testament, and those are fantastic for most people. But for some people, it's not good enough just to be working from the English, and particularly if we've got responsibilities for teaching and preaching, and encouraging one another in the Word of God, then we really need to know the languages, at least to some extent, and not be dependent on translations. So having acknowledged that sometimes the issue is our priorities rather than time, there are legitimate times where things we go through seasons of life where we really don't have as much time available for some things as we do for others. And that's legitimate. Here's the thing I want to encourage you with though. Sometimes we get in our mind that we need to spend large blocks of time in order to learn Greek, and it's simply not true. Really what we need is small amounts of time and consistency. Consistency, not the amount of time, is the crucial thing. So if all you can do on a day-by-day -day basis is to spend two minutes working on vocabulary or whatever it is, that two minutes will serve you more than doing nothing. And so even if you haven't got a lot of time, there are going to be times in your day where you do have a couple of minutes to spare. It's going to be when you're waiting in line for your coffee, or maybe you do coffee at home and you're waiting for the coffee machine, or maybe it's you know when you're in the bathroom, or whatever it is. There's going to be times in your day where there are downtimes that you can find time for social media, where you can find time for you know just sitting there doing nothing. Those times are times where you can spend one to two minutes just working on Greek, and that one to two minutes is going to be often the difference between making it and not. And so you have got little bits of time that you can take, but often it's not always the same and we don't always go through the same seasons of life. So start with small amounts of time, whatever time you do have, and then build it out from there. But often time is not really the issue, it's more like a priority. And that leads to the second reason people give up on Greek, and this comes back to our own hearts. And specifically, and I'm going to tackle this now early on, the subject and issue of laziness. Now, not everybody's suffering from laziness, but sometimes we have this heart-based problem where we say, you know what, I just don't feel like it right now. I want to do something else. I've struggled with this and I know other people have as well. It's not everybody and it's not us all of the time, but sometimes the issue really is just that we are lazy or sluggards as the Bible says. And in these cases, all I can encourage you to do is to recognize that there's a distinction between what we feel like doing and what we know we need to do. And so I want to encourage you with this time to actually separate your feelings from the it's a situation to say, this is what I feel like doing, and be guided rather than by your feelings, by the principles of the Word of God. And let me give you a couple of verses here that I've found really helpful, and these really just address the subject of laziness directly. These are passages like Proverbs 12 verse 11, he who tills his land will have plenty of bread, but he who pursues worthless things lacks sense. So the question here is, am I one who lacks sense because I'm pursuing worthless things, or am I one who is going to be tilling my land so that I have plenty of bread? Or in this case, you know, learning my Greek, 
so that I can read it and get the benefit from it. Or perhaps uh, Proverbs 13 verse 6, the soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, but the soul of the diligent is made fat. Or Proverbs 15 19, the way of the lazy is a hedge of thorns, but the path of the upright is a highway. And here the distinction is between the way you're walking and one you're walking in the hedge of thorns, and that's hard work, and in the other one it's an open broad way where you can walk and you don't have any hindrances. And so these are some of the verses, and there's others like uh, Proverbs 18 verse 9, he who is slack in his work is a brother to him who destroys. These verses, if they're helpful, go ahead and write them out on a piece of card or something and put them where you remember them. I did this for a long time, and it was really motivating when I would look at these and, and see these verses and really be challenged by them. So if the problem is the heart, then tackle the heart attitudes directly with the scriptures. And don't pay attention so much to what you feel like doing, but how God calls you to live. The third reason is motivation. This is the question of why am I doing this again? Is this really something valuable? And I've had another video where I talk about the clarity, the confidence, the efficiency and vitality that comes from learning Biblical Greek. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to leave a link to that video up here and you can click on that and go watch that video as well. But there's four key benefits, right? Clarity, clarity in what the scripture is saying. Confidence, confidence when I'm teaching and explaining it to other people because I've seen it for myself. Third one is efficiency. I'm not going to take anywhere near as long to prepare lessons and to do my Bible studies and Bible readings and those sorts of things because I'm getting a lot more from it a lot more quickly. And then vitality. By taking my time in the Greek of the New Testament, it forces me to think and meditate on what I'm reading as I go through it. And this provides huge benefits for me as I work through the Greek of the New Testament and learn to master Biblical Greek. The fourth reason is honestly, some people just don't make the commitment. First of all, this commitment needs to be a commitment to self. It needs to be that inward decision to say, you know what, I am going to do this. This is a valuable thing to do. At times I'm not going to feel like this and other times I'm going to, but I'm going to make a commitment now to actually do this and then set up regular reminders, maybe a weekly check-in for yourself on what have I done this week in Greek? Or maybe use one of the habit tracking apps that have been really helpful to just tick off when you've done something on your Greek each day. In fact, you could have multiple ones. Yes, I've done vocabulary today. Yes, I've done my passing today. Yes, I've done a little bit of reading today. And just track those things. And so you make a commitment and then use these tools to help you to um, identify that, yes, I've made a commitment and I'm taking positive steps forward on that commitment. Another one is too, to make a regular financial investment in that thing. Because where we put our money, our commitment tends to follow. And so making a commitment to a program such as Master New Testament Greek from a financial perspective can actually be an encouragement or an engagement of our own heart through our financial investment to commit to learning Greek as well. And another one of course with commitment is to tell other people about your commitment. But here's the thing, if you don't make the internal commitment first and you don't put in place something to remind you of that commitment, you're probably not going to ever master the Greek of the New Testament and you're going to give up. So that's the first four. They don't have time, they don't take action, maybe it's a heart issue in that case. They don't have the motivation or they forget the motivation, the reason why they're doing this, or they don't have the they don't make an actual commitment to do it. The fifth reason is uncertainty about what to do. Often people give up on Greek because they've actually stopped doing stuff and they just make this decision, well I'm not doing anything here, so I'm just going to give up. And what's really happened here is that often the case is this mental block. I don't know what I should do. And this is where following a proven system is helpful. It's going to lay out for you the the next step on your journey to mastering the Greek of the New Testament. And you need sometimes that kind of system where it's just, here's one thing to do each week. Here's a reminder to go do that thing each week. And by taking that one step each week, knowing what step it is and going on and doing that one step is going to be all it takes. But sometimes just not knowing what to do next is the problem. And this is a challenge, particularly for people who are learning Greek on their own. What do I do next? And so having a system to follow can really help you with that. There's ultimately three key things you need to do. And there's another video which I've made up, and I'll leave a link up here to that. But here what, here's what they are. Vocabulary, passing, and reading. If you're doing those three things on a regular basis, you are going to master the Greek of the New Testament. So that's the first five reasons people don't make progress and give up on Greek. They don't have time, at least they say they don't. They have a heart issue such as laziness. They forget their motivation for doing this. They don't make an actual commitment to do it. Or they have uncertainty about what to actually do on a day by day basis. And the last one is this, a fear of failure. And you might think, well, what's that got to do with it? I'm not afraid of failing. Maybe that's not you. But for some people, there's this challenge where we 
we actually don't take the first step because we're scared that if I, that I'm not going to be able to understand it, that I'm not going to be able to do it. This is actually a fear of failure. And when we think of that, and if that's holding you back, then ask yourself this, is there something in your past that has been difficult to do that you've learned how to do? Maybe the first time you got into a car to learn how to drive, you felt this was just overwhelming. But over time and with practice, you were able to do it. Maybe there's something else you've learned that it was really hard to do. But again, by just looking back at how you went from knowing nothing to being able to complete that, you're able to give yourself the confidence to say, actually, you know what? By making consistent steps in Greek, I can make progress. So if that's you, then don't be afraid of failure. The biggest thing to fear is never starting. If you learn Greek and then forget it, that is not as big a failure as never starting out of that fear in the first place. And so I encourage you to tackle that fear head on and to make, you know, to, to remind yourself of things that you have done and then go and find a system that's going to lead you step by step through to mastery of the New Testament. Now, one of the things I want to encourage you to do too, if, you, if you're trying to learn Greek or if you're trying to get your head around all of this, is go and download my free Roadmap to Mastery at masterntgreek.com slash roadmap. And this lays out for you the steps that you need to go from where you are now all the way to mastery of the Greek New Testament. So masterntgreek.com slash roadmap. And let me ask you this, if you've ever struggled to learn or to master Greek, which one of these six things has been the thing that has held you back? Has it been the lack of time, a legitimate lack of time? Has it been the heart issue, the laziness perhaps? Is it the motivation that struggled that you've struggled with? Is it the lack of commitment? You've never actually made the commitment, the uncertainty about what to do, or is it the fear of failure? Which one of these has been the biggest challenge for you personally? Leave a note in the comment section below and I look forward to hearing from you there. And again, if this has been helpful, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button as well, that'll be really helpful, and then hit the notify bell to be notified when new videos are released. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you then.